coming up on the Real Housewives of New Jersey after show. Why are they still filming? Teresa, go f yourself upstairs. And I told the producers, keep doing what you're doing because um, he's not gonna come. This video with Louie, it's weird. I mean, the video is quite obviously a little shocking. The video was something from an alien planet. <laughs> if someone's going away to a camp like this, that's a red flag. And, and, you know, maybe not to somebody else, but to me. These witches that are trying to hurt my boyfriend at the time, it's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen on my dime. Is that, that's the same, right? It's not gonna happen on my dime. He shouldn't have stuck his dick in somebody else. Who said that? Jackie. I felt like she took my words and weaponized them for her own purposes. She knew she was miked. She knew that they were gonna use that. And she knew that my children were gonna see that. To me, that was a very toxic opinion, to be honest. The whole point of her pretending constantly that everything was okay was to keep up airs for everybody else. No, bitch. Actually, I forgot he fucking cheated on me until you just reminded me. 10, 11 years later. So as you start to increase your food intake, your circulation actually increases. So that can cause your heart or your other organs to get overwhelmed. Oh. I was in denial. So I had been fooling myself for a very long time. I didn't really think I was that sick anymore, but when they heard my whole story, they were really shocked. It scared me. Bravo Insiders, your Real Housewives of New Jersey after show starts right now. Jennifer, this is when Dolores tells you what Jackie had said about Bill. Your friend over here? You know what she said when we were leaving her party? I don't care. He shouldn't have stuck his dick in somebody else. Who said that? Jackie. You know, it's, it's just so vile and it's so disgusting and it just shows what length someone could go to in order to draw some attention to themselves. And that's all I'll say about that. It's always hurtful when you put trust in friends and you don't judge their lives and um, and have it come back in a way where uh, instead of trying to be supportive towards a friend, um, you know, they're there to kind of shame them. But people will say things in the heat of the moment and they, they'll, does it reflect on their personalities? Yes, it does. So to me, that was a very toxic, um, opinion to be honest what made you finally say you know what i heard because i i felt that jackie was trying to infiltrate our our friendship for some reason any kind of friendship that she extended towards me was probably an attempt to manipulate me in order to maybe turn dolores against me or me against dolores so i felt that since Jackie wanted Jennifer to have the heads up on the kind of friend she mm -hmm. thought I was, it was time for me to let Jennifer know the kind of friend I thought she was being to her. I felt like she took my words and weaponized them for her own purposes. Because what I was saying was that I felt bad for Jennifer because Jennifer was the one who was cheated on and Jennifer was taking all of the responsibility for this, but it wasn't her who had done anything. Like I could have used less crude words, but the the reality is that it was Bill who stuck his dick into somebody else, not Jennifer. So why is she the one feeling all this pain right now, you know? And I think that Dolores took my words, which were meant to support Jennifer, and turned them into a weapon against me. Like, look what Jackie's saying about your husband. And I, I thought that was really low and I didn't like it. I get where Jackie was coming from with that. She was actually sticking up for Jennifer. I do realize that she said it in an attempt to say that she didn't feel bad for me and that she felt bad for whatever. She knew she was miked. She knew that they were going to use that. And she knew that my children were going to see that. Jackie, definitely ulterior motive, definitely. Because to me, she's such a follower. She's not a leader. She's a Margaret soldier, honey. She's a Margaret soldier. It's just so sad what Pete, you know, it's sad because it's like I went into like really trying to be her friend and I think Evan's great. I really do. I think, but to her follower. So regardless of what kind of context she was saying it in, it was just so repulsive to even hear those words. She wasn't my friend. I get it. She wanted shock value. She got it. But I think it backfired. <laughs> Jennifer, at the first night at the Jersey Shore, you find out that Teresa has 
left your house in yeah. sort of a huff. Where are you going? I'm leaving. Where the guys and guys are the devil? Teresa. Hey. Why are you still filming? Teresa. Go f yourself upstairs. Like, I don't know, you were fighting with them about Louis with something. I think Louis was gonna come meet us at the beach a little bit earlier. Do you remember what, do you remember what triggered you? Do you remember what made you walk yeah, out? Yeah, I was like, you know, he, he was on his way coming and then he just, I, I don't know, something triggered him. He's like, I'm not coming. I said, don't, don't worry about it, babe, don't come. Like, this is not his thing, you know, this is my thing. This is like, he doesn't, so I was like, babe, don't worry about it, don't come. And I told the producers, keep doing what you're doing because um, he's not gonna come. You know, and I don't, and I don't, and I don't blame them. So, so Teresa, when you guys left, I really had no idea. So this is the thing. Like, yeah, um, Louis um, fell in love with Teresa Judice, not Teresa Judice um, working on the Real Housewives of New Jersey. <laughs> this, he wanted none of this. He does not want to be on TV. He wants none of this. So I Never. was protecting no, him, and um, he, like, this is my life this is my job and and like these um like well what would you call margaret these um these like what would you the witches of east yes yeah okay the witches of east i love that the, wait, the, the three witches of yeah. east so it's like you know these yeah these witches that are trying to hurt my boyfriend at the time it's not gonna happen not gonna happen on my dime is that that's the same right it's not gonna happen on my dime it's not gonna happen so i will do anything that has to be, you know, anything that has to be done to protect my boyfriend because he didn't sign up for this. So that's why he doesn't have to come. Like if he comes, he's he's coming because he's coming as my date or he's coming like whatever to not make me go alone or if I ask him to come, he has no problem coming with me. But um, I'm not gonna put him in like the lion's den or anything like that. Never. So we heard about this infamous Louis video this season. What were your first thoughts on it? I don't know if you saw this, but this video with Louis, it's weird. It's out there everywhere. Everyone's talking about it on social media. Hi. This video going around about Louis is weirdo sh Maybe Joe Gorga, you wanna go first? Do I have to go first? <laughs> no, why, why is it my turn? Yeah, listen, I gotta watch what I say. I'm, I, I'm afraid to say anything. I don't even do anything. I give love and I get in trouble with this family. So I'm not saying shit. Go ahead, Beningo. Go ahead. I, I thought that the video was something from an alien planet. And it looked like a whole bunch of guys. And it looked like they all had no clothes on. And that's kind of crazy to me. I mean, the video is quite obviously a little shocking. Listen, when I first saw the video pop up, I thought it was weird. I thought it was like some weird toxic masculinity camp. That's, that's what I thought it was. I found it pretty funny. I'm sorry that I, <laughs> I thought it was funny. I watched it so many times. You know, by then I had met Louis, so I had full confidence in his personality. But if somebody doesn't know the other person, right, and you're watching a short clip, you may jump on it. You may say, geez, what is this? You know, it could be cringeworthy to them. Bill, Bill put it well, all right? When you, at this point, when I first saw the video, I had only met um, Louis briefly. And when you do see the video and, and you don't know what context it's in, you know, I, I didn't know. You didn't see it from the waist down. I didn't know these guys are naked in the woods together. I didn't know what the hell was going on, all right? And quite honestly, I was ready to bust Louis' balls about it. Your turn, Joe. You're coming back to me. You're coming... Well, I, uh, I was surprised to see the video. I've never seen anything like it, I, honestly. I just really, and, you know, I, I was surprised. But when I did meet Louis for the first time, literally within 10 minutes of meeting him, he talked to me about this camp. You know, it makes you a better man, and you should come. And he invited me to the camp. So I, I knew about the camp, but I didn't know it was to that extreme I never seen anything like it. You know, you take it with a grain of salt, though. It's not like we're going to change our whole entire opinion on him because of this video. It's just something that we're obviously going to mention. You know, if they just address it and he just says, like, listen, this is 
what's going on here. I was going through a rough time. This is where I go during that time. I feel like it would have been squashed so much sooner. I agree that if he had just addressed it and put it to bed, we could have moved on. But because it was not addressed, it just kept everybody talking. It did. If he addresses it and she says, yes, I saw it and I don't care about it. And yes, guys, thank you for being concerned. But that's actually when he was, you know, feeling like, I feel like we would have left it alone right there. I mean, no, there's no need to keep prying if, if two people in a relationship and they're both good with it, then who are we to pry or who is anyone on our cast to pry? There's no reason to do that. There's nothing more that I want Teresa to be happy. She deserves to be with someone who's amazing. I'm not saying he doesn't love her. I'm not saying all of these things. Of course. But that's a red flag. And, and, you know, maybe not to somebody else, but to me. Margaret, Jennifer admits that you being so open about your past affair was kind of a trigger to her. I went in on you a little bit too much with your relationships. I'm just starting to realize now that the way that she's been boasting about her affair was a real trigger for me. Yeah, I think me being so open um, probably dug into her biggest fears. And I think it dug into her biggest fears because I actually left my husband and maybe she thought, that's probably, you know, her buried deepest nightmare because an affair can break up a marriage. Not that it would break up hers. I'm not saying that's what would happen, but I think that happens to a lot of people. And I think I, you know, personified that for her, like, oh my God, this woman had an affair and it actually broke up a marriage. And maybe she thought, you know what, if I think about this hard enough, that could have happened to me. You know, we come from such two different places and to, for me to get my point across to her is very difficult. And it wasn't really about the cheating, the affair, the this, the that. It, that's not what it was about. It was just me showing her that it's the endless hypocrisy. Your husband was like me. But, and then you called me slutty for the same behavior. That's what it was. Listen, I acknowledge that shit happens in relationships. My issue with her wasn't so much that she cheated, is that she was so vocal about it. Now listen, you go to dinner and you're with a gentleman and his new wife. And he's telling you how he met his new wife. And he says, well, I was sleeping with her for two years first. Remember, babe? Remember when you had to go home and wash my stench off you before your husband came oh home and banged God. you? Remember that? All right, that is fucking taboo on every level. Not just me. Just don't, don't boast about it. You have kids. Just because she put it out there and said, and, and, you know, told, told the whole world she cheated on her husband with the plumber, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> and how this happened is that Margaret brought this out. Take it down a notch. Just stop talking about it so much. So don't say I'm a hypocrite, like, cause I stayed with a cheater. My fucking cheater didn't brag about it, okay? He didn't tell one soul. How about you take notes right. and just don't brag about it. That's it. I'm mad at you in general for all the women out there that have been cheated on, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up because somebody's kids are watching this. And although you think it's funny and you could like poke jokes, all right, these are people's lives we're talking about. It's not about the cheating. It's about you have this stuff in your backyard. Stop attacking everybody else for the same thing in their backyard. That's really what the point was. Jackie, we see Dolores kind of go from zero to 100 with you. If I don't need to hear from this. Don't I mean, I got nervous. I, I ran over to them instantly and I was kind of like holding Dolores's arms and just, you know, I, I never want to see my two girlfriends fight. Dolores kind of went from zero to a hundred in two seconds. It was like crazy. I was extremely worried for Jackie, Evan. Let me tell you something. And I'm a, I'll be worried for you, Evan. <laughs> If Dolores, if you got in her way. I, I'd, I'd be worried. I'm trust scared. Trust me, man. Dolores is someone you don't want to mess with. She can throw down. She is known for loyalty, right? Yes. So I think one of the reasons why she did get so mad is because she's known for her loyalty. If somebody is going after her character, so to speak, and try to discredit that, I think she gets in very high defense mode. She's just like me. But who repeats that? True. No, I never lie. said that. Like you know, if you push her buttons, uh, she'll she'll definitely react. Dolores has the potential to snap sometimes, so I wasn't shocked, 
But I didn't, I certainly didn't think Dolores and I would be the two people fighting during this party. She really just pissed me off. She really did. Jackie and I don't always agree on things. We like each other, but we don't agree on things. And I think that she hit something that I'm, um, that means a lot to me. I'm known as being a very loyal friend, which I am. Dolores gets carried away, you know, it's not carried away. Sometimes it is, it is deserved, all right? But I, I did step in one time between her and one of her ex-boyfriends where, where she was attempting to beat him with a kitchen chair, all right? Yeah, so I, at that point, <laughs> yeah. Typical Dolores, just like an everyday thing growing up. I could tell you one great story. It was grammar school. I think I was in second grade. I was walking down the street, just turning a corner because you would come out of the school, you have to, I had to walk down, turn the corner, go straight to my house. As soon as I turned the corner, you just see a crowd of people, right? Crowd. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, so everybody just runs to the crowd. I go there and there's, Dolores has got one girl by her hair, dragging her, and the other girl, she's punching her, punching her on the street, just, just laying her out. They're both laid out. She gets up, she walks, she fixes her hair, and she walks away like nothing ever happened. Oh, yeah. She, tough girl. Tough. And she looked good. That's she tough. didn't have a hair out of spot. Her makeup, her long nails were still there. It was amazing. But we all get hot-headed sometimes. Some people more than others, right? Hot Italian blood, you call it. Um, walking away is always the better thing in my mind. But, you know, sometimes people have to get things off their chest. I think when you listen, think, listen, hold things too listen. long, yeah, it doesn't help it either. That, that night, no matter what was going on, as long as the attention wasn't on Bill, Bill was happy. All right? Oh, all right. of course, man. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was still licking my wounds, man. I'll tell you. I was like, thank God. It wasn't me. Dolores, were you surprised to hear what Jackie had told Jennifer? Jackie has even said that she's witnessed firsthand how you're not a good friend to me. I actually did not know that that was going to happen. I was not aware of the conversation that Jackie and Jennifer had prior to that. Margaret and Jackie are friends to start off yes. with. I was friends with Jennifer and I was friends with Margaret. I'm not making friends with people during their fights. So I was confused on why Jackie was going there to befriend Jennifer and then like questioning me on me being friends with both of them. It wasn't that I was trying to befriend Jennifer. I felt like Jennifer really didn't have a support system. And I know what it felt like. I keep going back to that one night at the Jersey Shore when I didn't really, I felt very alone. Why is everyone yelling at me? What the f did I do? I didn't want Jennifer to feel like that. It was my party and I was gonna make sure that she had somebody with her. But all along, I felt like Dolores was just trying to make everybody like her. And so she was telling Margaret she was right, and then she was telling Jennifer she was right. And ordinarily, I wouldn't get involved in anything like that, but Jennifer needed somebody who was really gonna support her. And somebody who's going behind her back and telling the other person, I really think you're right, is not, is not being a good friend to her. So I told her, because I don't want her spending her time with a, a person who's gonna end up hurting her or abandoning her, because she really needed somebody. She was really struggling as a parent. She was broken at that point. Dolores at times had played kind of both sides of a relationship. If two people were fighting, she'd kind of be friends with both sides and kind of not, not pick a side, which I think in, in this uh, dynamic is, is difficult and people look down upon that just because you're supposed to pick a side and be passionate about it. She, she picks a side, but... But she really doesn't show it, Joe. Right. Right, Joe? Right. She doesn't show yeah. it around this group. She does pick sides, but in this group, she kind of plays equal. She's, she plays the, the middle of the road. I don't think she wants to upset the cart too much, and she likes everyone, so Switzerland. In her defense, it's probably the smart thing to do. Oh, yeah, with all these girls, of course. Yeah, of course. The purpose of me telling Dolores what Jackie said was not to get Dolores all riled up but really for her to acknowledge that, listen, if this is from the outside in and that's what they're seeing, maybe a lot of people are seeing that as well. And even though I'm confident in our friendship together, if they're seeing this, then maybe that should tell you something about the way that you handle things with me. I'm not gonna sit there and 
be naive and pretend that I haven't seen the things that Dolores has said or done behind my back. I'll tell you right now why I'm aggravated at her. Because she goes around how happy she is. She comes after this one. She knocks this one. Then guess what? If you're really living that, then what are you falling apart for? I do realize that Dolores rolls her eyes at me a lot. Don't think I don't see it. So when Jackie was telling me this, I wasn't trying to agree with Jackie, but I was like, you know what? Dolores needs to step up her game. Because if she really does care about me, how come nobody sees it except me? You know, so I was trying to tell her in an attempt for her to actually acknowledge what she's been saying and then maybe say, you know what, Jen? I'm going to prove to you what a great friend I am. Dolores is a very good friend. She's a great friend. But I knew that would upset Dolores because she has stuck by Jennifer even when Jennifer didn't deserve to be stuck by. Don't turn this around on me because I'm not going to be an idiot in a doormat and say, oh, really? Dolores, Dolores loves me. She always talks so highly about me. Um, we've all seen that she hasn't. Margaret, Jennifer tells you about her fears about how the Syrian Orthodox community might view her after finding out about Bill's affair. Okay, well, no Bill. I don't want him to be humiliated. He's not gonna be humiliated. You know? It's yeah. always about like protecting him. My family's name, my in-laws. Like they're what, gonna blame what, me for what are they gonna Him having an affair isn't her fault. You know, I didn't want her taking on that emotional responsibility. And I think she did. The whole point of her pretending constantly that everything was okay was to keep up airs for everybody else and not taking care of herself and her own emotions and just making it look good for everybody else for fear of what everybody else thinks. But therefore it was just burying emotion. So I, I actually at that moment felt sorry for her because it's, it wasn't a reflection on her and, her and shortcomings, nothing even remotely like that. Listen, listen, I know that you guys know me to be a housewife of New Jersey, but you, I will have you know that I come from a very tight knit culture, a community where we have a directory where all of the Syrian Orthodox people that are in the nation are in. It's like a telephone book. It's like a yellow pages. And my in-laws are on the back cover of that directory. Okay. Honor, family name, family reputation. These are all very big. Yes. People in the Syrian Orthodox community do cheat. And I'm not saying they all cheat. I'm just, I'm just trying not to be ignorant of the facts. Like, they don't talk about it. They don't brag about it. You know, they try to keep the sanctity of marriage. Listen, in my house, don't think that, that my husband cheats on me left and right. This was a one and done, okay? And that was his past. And I put it in the vault and I threw away the key. And I really did forget about it. I did. So when she wants to sit there and say like, oh, you chastised me for being a cheater because you were the cheater. Nah, bitch. Actually, I forgot he cheated on me until you just reminded me 10, 11 years later. Okay, because I was in my happy place. So I come from a very big culture where family name means more than any dollar you have. Okay, and people look at that when it's time to get married. When I try to get my kids married off, let's say I want them to get married in my culture, there's going to be this stigma now. Oh no, we don't want that family. That family has a cheater. Oh, but everybody cheats. Oh, but it doesn't matter. That's the one we know for sure. And that's the one that's out there. So we're going to stay away from that family. I mean, literally, we're going to have the scarlet letter put on our family. And this is extremely hard for my in-laws, my, my relatives, my nieces and nephews. And they're like, this is not just about you. This is about all of our family's reputation. You know, I wasn't protecting my husband. I wasn't trying to save face from embarrassment, although of course I feel some embarrassment. I was trying to protect my children and my family. And, and I think I, I think Margaret was so wrong for doing that because listen, Jen can handle it. She's an adult and Bill can handle it. He's, they're both adults. But what's sad is that her kids have to go do this. It's sad, it's sad. Thanks to Margaret. <laughs> Jackie, you and Evan talk about your eating disorder, and he reveals to you that your children are noticing some of your patterns. My eating is so ritualized, you know? I eat the same over and right. over again. Salad after know, salad look, after trust salad. Trust me, our kids notice it, by the way. No, they haven't. Yeah, they have. I said, why is mom eating the same dinner every night? I said, just let her be. My kids, I didn't think they were picking up on things yet, and I think that was really foolish because I know that I picked up on a lot of bad habits when I was a kid. You know, I'm not so worried about them at like 
13 years old being like, let me do what my mom is doing. I'm worried about them when they're 19 years old and they say, I got to lose some weight. What were the things that my mom used to do? You know, I don't, I don't want to have any influence on them having an eating disorder. So uh, that really scared me. I realized that I need to be a much better role model for my kids. I also need to be healthy for my kids so I can be here with them. Yeah. And speaking of your health, we do actually get to see you go seek help for your eating disorder. Yeah. So as you start to increase your food intake, your circulation actually increases. So that can cause your heart or your other organs to get overwhelmed. Oh. So some people experience heart attacks or cardiac issues. Uh, Do you think I'm at risk for that? You could be. We can't rule it out until we get our okay. medical. Were you kind of surprised that they were as alarmed as they were? Yeah, I was surprised because um, I was in denial for a long time. So I was had been like really, really sick around the time of my wedding and then for a few years after that. And then I got some help and I got a little better and I kind of let myself just be in that little bit better place for a long time. I considered myself recovered enough. So I had been fooling myself for a very long time. I didn't really think I was that sick anymore, but I think that I really was. And I think when they heard my whole story, they they were really um, shocked and it scared me. Takes the village people. It's not the village people. <laughs> <laughs> the look I'm going for is that it's a tribute to Sarah Jessica Parker and them. It's very, a big tool skirt. I don't know how to exactly pronounce the brand. It's like, Oh me when I don't know, but they're know. great. They make all tool pro uh, skirts and stuff like that. I just basically have on a tight like ballet bodysuit from Commando, my own like little bow belt, which is from Zara, believe it or not. I have on Sergio Rossi shoes. Oh, I love Sergio Rossi. Yeah, so that's that's really what I'm wearing. But you know, I'm always very kooky. So I, it's it's more simple, kind of sexy look. This is Rami Brook. It's like a, a nice cotton, comfortable jersey kind of material, but it's sexy and it just fits right and it's higher neck. So I went with a more sophisticated hairdo rather than hairdo, that's my age. <laughs> right, Marge? <clears throat> I'm such an old Yeah, girl. I know, you and I, we, we got the hairdo. <laughs> Hairstyle. A uh, more sophisticated hairstyle because of the higher neck. It looks good. We got the hairdo going. Gorgeous. We got the hairdo. So my look today, I wanted to do a little bit of a retro look. I have very sparkly blue Swarovski earrings and they're just very like old school glam. So I did a little poof, long curls and a black helmet laying cutout dress. You look beautiful. Thank you. I'm wearing Envy, of course. It's my dress is from Sailor, one of the brands at that I carry at Envy that I absolutely love. Um, just a cute little sparkly number. I'm showing a little breasts today, you know. And um, I did a little gold on the eyes. We played with gold makeup today. My glam team's the best, so we, we were playing today with hair and makeup, and I just decided I wanted sleek hair with a little sparkly dress, so that's it. I'm wearing this, it's like a satin blouse. I think they call this, what do they call it? It's like pussy willow, pussy bow. I just don't feel comfortable saying the word pussy. <laughs> so I like your pussy glass. Thank you. It. And I have these cute little like satin pants, but they're they're kind of like sweatpants because they have elastic waist. And of course, I have to top it off with jewelry from my brother's jewelry store, which are these chandelier earrings. I took off my shoe to see what shoe I'm wearing. Yeah, I have a, a Versace pump with these. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'll start off with my shoes. I'm wearing um, Giuseppe Zanatti's and they have star diamonds all across. Three rows of them. Wait, are these though? I can't see them. Okay, how about like this? Can you see it, Jen? I'm looking at my leg. I can't. No, I gotta come real close. All right, they're, well, they're like- um, Oh yeah, I like them. And yeah, they have- strappy. Yeah, they have stars. So like these are Giuseppe Zanatti's, my shoes. I have commando leggings on. I have a bodysuit, it's a halter bodysuit with those um, studs on it. And then my um, blazer is by Shop by Rhea. 
love it and then my diamond earrings that louie got me and um i have my engagement ring on same same honey hi yeah and that's it it's a look honey